Hey everybody, it's Ken Davenport. Welcome to our very first Producers Perspective Live. Uh, and let me start by saying, I really wish we weren't doing this. Uh, you know, look, we're gonna try to have some fun and bring you a lot of inspirational stuff. We've got a great, great lineup of speakers. So many industry greats have jumped and leapt at the chance. We literally sent out an email and we had so many responses in our inbox right away uh, of incredible people wanting to participate in this series, which we're gonna bring to you every single night until this thing is done, until we feel more comfortable about gathering together in groups, actually in person, not through a screen. So let me just reiterate to those of you joining right now, welcome. Welcome to the Producers Perspective Live from the Upper West Side in Manhattan. And again, I will just say this, I wish to God we were not doing this. You know, but we, we, I had to do something. I wanted to reach out. What happened was the story of why we're doing this, um, for those of you who just joined us, and um, for those of you who are watching this on the replay, these will be replayed, recorded and replayed. Um, so last week when things started to hit the fan, I started just doing a lot of text check-ins. I know people were uh, doing this with me, and for a lot of people were doing this uh, all over the world. Just, hey, how you doing, your family? Uh, high school friends, et cetera. We were just all checking in on each other. Um, and I started doing it to some of my big Broadway friends and they were responding um, with incredible words of inspiration and incredible thoughts. And we're gonna get through this and the curtain will rise again. And how are you, Ken? And how's your family? And just look, I just got a chat from Joanna. Hello, Joanna. And hello, Sally, uh, commenting in, um, asking how my family is. Uh, and we are good. Uh, we are good. We are healthy. Um, we did have a, um, an unrelated virus issue last night with my dad, but, um, and I thought about actually not doing this because uh, of my dad, but um, he'd want me to keep going. So uh, that's all we're going to talk about, about that issue right now. Um, so, because I love him and, and I know he'd want me to keep going with what I do. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So everyone's been checking in with me and with each other. And as I was doing this again with my big Broadway friends, all these VIPs that frankly I fanboy uh, about all the time. And uh, they, they were so great and they helped me actually put that smile back on my face. And they helped me uh, get back in and be able to be an inspiration and put a smile on my daughter's face because these are tough times. These are, we've heard this word so many times, uh, unprecedented times. Uh, and uh, I think we need each other. Um, I think this business is a group of people, Broadway and the theater, it's such a collaborative group of people and a group of people who care so much about what they do and also about the people who do it. Because let's, let's be frank, if you don't like people, you're not going to join the theater. You are not going to get involved in th this organization and this institution that actually requires you to collaborate with other people. Uh, people ask me why I was drawn to the theater, and I often say it's because I was an only child. And uh, when I was five years old, my parents dragged me to an audition for a show, and all of a sudden I had this instant family. Uh, and I think a lot of you, I'm sure, know exactly what that's like the first time you did a show when you were in community theater or in high school and you thought, oh my gosh, these people are just like me. Um, well, I am so fortunate and so blessed to be able to wake up every single day and work in this business that I love so much. Uh, and that's what this is all about. I'm doing this because, frankly, I, I can't stand the fact that I can't go to work. I physically can't go to work. I know you all can't go to work. Uh, you can't do what you love if you're rehearsing a show right now. So many of the people we're going to have on, Stephen Schwartz tomorrow has shows that have just shut down. Um, all sorts of folks um, that we're going to have on have been involved with shows literally in rehearsal, and now they're not. And that's very challenging for us all to deal with. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to check in with everybody and uh, see how they're doing, how they're coping, and they're gonna help you just like, frankly, they helped me. Uh, so many of them. I want Justin Guarini, I don't know if he's booked a date yet. Mary, say hi to our producer, Mary, by the way. Uh, I don't know if Justin's booked a date, but Justin's a really inspiring guy, and I want uh, him to come on board. Um, we have a lot of folks that are, that are gonna be here for you over the next several weeks or however it, long it takes um, to get us back to where we belong, which is having our curtain up. Um, just a few shout outs. Hello, Holly. Hello, Alan. Hello, Belinda. 
Uh, hello to all of you. A couple um, more specific reasons why we're doing this, and we're gonna, um, I'm gonna sh flash some stuff on the screen for you right now. It's very fancy. Uh, Number uh, one, I told you why we're doing this, just to check in, a little wellness check in with all of you, make sure you're doing it, and my friends, and um, they're gonna help us all out. Number two, this hashtag, uh, we just started it. I don't know if it's been out there, but I love it, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. That is one of the things we're trying to push, stay home. I really don't even care if you watch Netflix all day. That's right, I'm a theater guy telling you to watch movies and television, but stay the F home. Do not go anywhere. Hashtag stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to draw your attention to one of the most important organizations, especially right now in the theater, which is the Actors Fund. Go marry. Look at that. This is like fancy. Uh, go to actorsfund.org. This is an incredible organization that I've supported over the years that uh, helps not only actors, by the way, technicians, designers, writers, all sorts of folks in the entertainment uh, in industry get through difficult times like this. So uh, that's what we're going to do. That's why we're doing this over the next several days. For those of you who just joined us, uh, we're doing this to check in with some of the biggest and brightest stars on Broadway and see how they're dealing with this crisis. And uh, they're going to help you deal with it as well. Uh, they're going to tell you what they're doing, if they're working, what they're working on, how they're coping what they do when they're a little bit down, as we all can get uh, when we're just stuck in our homes like this. Uh, and two, we're gonna do it to draw attention to the fact that you should be staying home. Uh, and three, we're going to try to draw a little attention, put a spotlight on the Actors Fund and see what we can do um, to get them as more donations because they need it. They need it. Uh, and lastly, tonight, you know why we're doing this? It's just me tonight, no guests, sorry about that. No fancy guests, you just got me. Uh, the reason we're doing it tonight solo is I wanted to uh, stress test this technology on myself and no one else but me uh, until we brought on some fancy person and we didn't know what the F we were doing. So that's what we're doing. And from the comments that I'm getting in, oh, there's Summer. She works for me. Uh, I, she's always remote. So it's like not that big a deal. Look, she's saying hi to her coworker. You know why? Because she hasn't seen her in many days. Summer is always remote, so this is like old hat. So Summer, you know, we're just going to show you the normal amount of love we show you. Barbara from Chicago, hello. Um, David Green, Helene's here. Hello, Helene. Uh, Australia so far is the furthest place from uh, that we've got. Any other locations around? Hello from Australia. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you're there. It is uh, Gregor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Lots of comments. Pop those comments in the live comments. We'll feature them uh, as we go, and this will be a great way for you to get questions, not only to me, but to our stars. Jane Caplow, Jane! See, this is why we're doing this. We're checking in. Jane used to work for me. Jane used to read scripts. Jane helped find the composer of getting the band back together for me. We have someone from Spain. Spain, Costa is in the house. Oh, I'm so glad those Neil Diamond fans are with. We are, we are making it. We are making it now. Literally, I was working on the Neil Diamond musical today. Today, 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 we were doing just that, I promise. And uh, we may have an announcement anytime soon. We're talking to Neil to see if we can leak some information. So watch his Twitter feed. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can get Neil. Maybe Neil will join me for a little bit. I don't know. We'll try. We'll try. Uh, maybe I'll get Bob Gaudio. Bob Gaudio, original Jersey boy. We'll try him too. Rick, how are you, Rick? Hope you're safe and healthy out there. Uh, Matt Spencer, welcome, everyone. Um, this is like, uh, this is very touching and this is very moving to see all you people here. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm a little emotional. I'll say it. You know why? Because I've been craving as much of a collaborative energy and a group of people as you have. I can feel it. Uh, and the one thing I will tell you about this, my one prediction, everyone's talking about what happens when the business comes back. What happens? Will it come back? Will it come back? Will it come back? How I'm feeling right now and how I think you're feeling right now about being in this virtual room with me or whenever you're chatting with friends or there's this incredible feeling about being with a group of people that you share something in common with, right? Even if it's electronically, we are going to so crave, crave that primitive desire to gather in groups. When that curtain goes up again and the spotlights go on, we are gonna to rush to those theaters. 
When they give us the all clear, and we're going to wait for that all clear, but when they give us that all clear, I think the theaters are going to be packed with people, packed, and the business is going to come booming back because it's a primitive need for us to share these experiences together in groups. That is what is important. That's why we love the theater. That's why all of you are here. Hello, John from Arizona. John from Phoenix, Arizona. I was born in Arizona. I was born at, in Scott, uh, uh, Good Samaritan Hospital in Phoenix, Arizona. I was just there doing some work with great theater company, the Phoenix Theater Company there. They just did a great new musical called Americano, the musical. Did you see it, John? Did you see Americano? Let us know. It's a great show. I've done some work with that theater uh, and with the authors there and with the producer there. Uh, hello, Christy. Hello, Angela. Hello, Jenny Lynn. Uh, Lauren's here. Yes, the business will come back. It will. We will need to gather. And I'm going to use a really bad example, a very, very bad example to explain why I know theater is going to come back. Because I don't know if you noticed, but everyone's been talking about the I'll use a nicer word right now. The folks who have made very interesting choices by going to beaches and parks over this past weekend, especially in this city. New York City is a hot spot right now. I don't know, what's the percent of cases that are here in this city? And you are going to parks and gathering in groups? That is not very smart. Not very smart, but I will tell you why. That is a perfect example of why I know business will come booming back because these people are so desperate to gather in groups that they're ignoring the best experts in the world who tell them don't do this. They're still doing it. So they will eventually stop because people are going to make them stop. I'm pretty sure of it. And I think they'll grow a conscience. And also uh, what that means is when the uh, gates are lifted and when we're allowed to go into those theaters and we're allowed to gather in restaurants, it's all going to come booming back. We have to hope and we have to believe and we have to uh, do everything we can now uh, to keep these fires burning. That's another reason why we're, we're doing this tonight, just to keep a spotlight on the industry, a uh, spotlight on all my friends in this business who are working hard right now there's people i know writing scripts several of you out there anyone writing right now raise your hand comment if you're writing something right now and vow to finish it by the end of this thing uh i that's another reason for me to wish that it ends like next week or the week after just so you have to get yours out faster so anyone uh anyone out there just comment that you are working on something um hello tomorrow hello john uh yeah, 5%, Valerie, 5% of total U.S. Uh, my mother-in-law is here. It's amazing. Cindy Weiler, hello, mom-in-law. Look at that. Ooh, that's like a wedding photo of ours. Um, hello, Renee. Hello, Renee again. Uh, John, Monica. Monica works for me, also remote, but we're going to show her extra love. You know why? In the midst of all this, and just to show you that there is, there's always joy. There's always light in the darkest of effing moments. Monica just gave birth, her and her wife, they just gave birth to a baby boy in the midst of it. They had to go into a hospital, which I can't, listen, I brought my wife, we, had, uh, we have a two-year-old now. That was a very stressful experience just on its own. And there was not this shit going on around us. So big love, big congratulations to Monica and her wife and their little son, Cal. Congratulations to them, some, some sunshine and all of this. Um, oh, look at that. Mary is doing graphics on the fly. We are, I mean, this is, this. she's doing a great job. Uh, Major Dodge is here. Molly Sky Brown, hello, everybody. This is amazing. So many people I haven't seen in a while. Uh, this is awesome. I am, uh, I could just go on and just read these, these comments and just like sit here and be like, hey, this is amazing. Look at all these people I haven't said hi to in a long time. I wonder if my friends from high school will show up. Um, so uh, I am taking questions. I am taking questions on anything right now. Uh, just so you know how these series, for you, if you're just joining us, what we're going to do for the next, I don't know how long, hopefully it's not very long, because once again, as I said at the top of this thing, I really hope to not be doing this for very long. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. It's a little outside my comfort zone. See, I, I flubbed comfort zone. <laughs> it's a little outside my comfort zone. And two, I want this thing to be over desperately. I want it to be over desperately. I hate that we have to do this, but we're doing it. 
um, we're doing it. So that's what we're going to do over the next, I don't know how long, we've got great speakers lined up. I don't know if um, Fancy Marion with her producer hat on right now or like television producing hat can show any of the upcoming guests we have this week. Can you do that with graphics? We have, I think, Stephen Schwartz coming up tomorrow. Sierra Boggis, I think the next day. Alex freaking Brightman the next day. We've got Rick Miramontes, press agent to the superstars coming up the day after that. Stephen Flaherty is joining us. Uh, Lee Silverman is joining us. Pam McKinnon is joining us. Lonnie Price is joining us. I mean, Tony winners, Oscar winners galore, all coming, all coming uh, to join you and me from my office on the Upper West Side. Some questions are roaming in. How is my precious daughter enjoying having me at home? Actually, that is one of the bright spots. And thanks for asking, Chris, because what we're going to have to do, all of us, over the next several weeks is find the bright spots. And I said that to myself today. I said, as I was having a difficult moment, and again, I'll just mention a little prayer for my dad right now. I was having a difficult moment, and uh, I'm a big gratitude guy. I try to find uh, something to be grateful for every single day. I know who's going to talk about that a lot is Sierra Boggess. We're going to talk about her and her light lessons. I'll give her a plug right now. Go get light lessons by Sierra Boggess to help you through the day. So I was have, I'm a big gratitude guy, and I was like having a real down moment, trapped, uh, trying to keep my business going, trying to do a lot of things. And uh, my daughter said my two favorite words. You know what they are? Daddy. Daddy. And I sat with her for an hour and a half and played Play-Doh. That's what I did, an hour and a half and played Play-Doh. And let me tell you something. If this weren't happening right now, I wouldn't have spent an hour and a half playing Play-Doh with it. So that's something I'm grateful for in the midst of all this darkness and all this chaos. Uh, and uh, once again, let me say that we're all going through stuff right now, but I really want to say a big shout out and, and prayers and uh, every ounce of energy uh, that I can send, positive energy to all the people that are battling uh, Corona, especially the ones who are hospitalized, especially our elderly population, anyone affected, and to the families of those affected, anyone who passed on, we want to send our, our hearts and thoughts out to them. Um, so yeah, that's uh, my daughter. My daughter, um, I think, we had a great day today. We had a great day today because of it. Um, so um, what other questions? Um, I see, I got a scroll up here. Predictions, yeah, for Broadway when it recovers, what changes will we'll see? Well, I, um, I did uh, mention, I do think that business, you know, just imagine for a second, if, if you're working in the theater, if you're working on a show at a theater on Broadway, if you're a Broadway usher, um, if you're a Broadway uh, hair supervisor, if you're a Broadway, box office person, actor, I want you to imagine one thing for me right now, all of us, one thing. Imagine being in that theater on the very first performance of whatever musical you're in or whatever play you're in that they allow us to go see again. Imagine what that's gonna sound like when that curtain goes up. Just take a moment. Just imagine the roar and the applause and all of it that's gonna happen and it will happen and it will happen. And that's actually one of the things that helps me get through the day. So I think it's gonna be, that's gonna be an amazing celebration, an amazing moment. The biggest ticker tape parade you can imagine. Broadway is the epicenter of New York City. We are a symbol of its health. We are a symbol that we are alive and kicking. Um, in fact, I don't know if you followed the trajectory, but when Broadway shut down, the volume on the news cycle and the actual realization from around the country and around the world that this was serious really took hold because we're, it takes a lot to shut Broadway down. When Broadway shut down, people actually were like, oh no, this is serious. Uh, and I felt that people started to pay more attention. People were texting me from all over the country uh, saying, what's happening? Um, so changes we'll see. Um, you know, I think there's going to be this, certainly this excitement. I think some shows, unfortunately, we've already seen some shows um, but not as many as I thought, which goes to the testament of the producers and those investors and all those people involved with those shows. Um, you're going to see, um, you know, uh, Hangman isn't coming back. Virginia Woolf is not coming back. Unfortunately, my Once in the Silent tour had to close prematurely. The Play That Goes Wrong tour had to close prematurely. Aladdin had to close. The tour had to close. So you're going to see fewer shows. But I haven't heard anything right now that any of the newer shows aren't going to happen. So those shows that were in previews or shows, I hear those musicals, those things that you've been dying to see, uh, I think they're going to come back. 
Um, so we'll see. What other questions we got out there? Michael Shane by Alan Carr. Oh, Renee, I submitted a play for publication. Has been accepted. What should I accept? Uh, expect from a contract? Um, well, look, I tell this to people that I'm actually negotiating. They're on the other side of the table. I will tell you the same advice that are people are negotiating with me. Run it by someone. Run it by someone. I never want people signing a contract with me that haven't gotten someone else's opinion. It can be a lawyer, it can be an agent, it can be a general manager, it can be a smart friend, it can be anybody, but have someone take a look at it. And I, there's a lot of things you can expect from it. And I frankly just don't want to postulate on what that might be. What I really want you to do is don't rush to any decisions and have someone look at it. Have someone, look, I'll look at it for you. What, what, am, what am I doing over the next several weeks? Try to get it quick and I'll take a look at it for you, Renee. Um, so, uh, and, and give it a once over, definitely get someone to look at that for you. Uh, let's, um, go to another question. Michael Shane, my Alan Carr play has been put on hold because of the virus. I'm attempting libretto. Have you ever written a libretto before Michael ever written a book for a musical before? Let's see. Can he comment back? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. If you haven't, I'll just answer. I'm going to say you didn't. Uh, a couple great books for you. Steve Kuden's book, uh, Beating Broadway, fantastic book. Steve spoke at our super conference a couple years ago. Uh, and by the way, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Um, we've had we have these. You know, we've done three super conferences, three super conferences, uh, each one bigger than the one before with more speakers. We have videos of all of those panels. Guess what we're going to release starting tomorrow? We've had them held in our uh, reserve. Um, and frankly, I always wondered like what the heck we were doing it with it. And we, it's been features for certain, like our theater maker studio and stuff. Um, we're going to release them for you. We want you to see this stuff. We want you to be inspired by it. And tomorrow we're um, going to release the very first one. And it's, it is the best. It is, it's Stephanie J. Block's keynote her Stephanie J. Block's keynote of this year's Super Conference. And if you were at Super Conference, then you know why it's special. Because 24 hours prior to delivering this keynote, Stephanie J. Block, Tony winner, did not know she was delivering this keynote. Heidi Schreck was supposed to do it, fell unfortunately ill, and could not attend at the very last second. Uh, and um, we, hi Heidi, maybe Heidi will join us, we'll reach out. Um, so uh, she couldn't do it, Stephanie, joined us and knocked it out of the park. And we're gonna show you that speech tomorrow. And then we're every day, just like we do a live, we're gonna release a From the Archives video series. Mary, who's producing uh, and helping with the blog, doesn't even know that's actually happening the way I want it to happen. I gotta explain that to her after. It's not gonna be that bad, Mary, don't worry. You got time, you got time in your hands. Okay, so um, we're gonna be doing that. Uh, what else are we doing? Uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, Steve Kuden's Beating Broadway. You want to take a look at that book? Um, it's a great one. The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler, another great book. I don't know, Mary, if you can put these um, links anywhere or send them around, but Steve Kuden's Beating Broadway, get it. Amazon, Audible, you've got time in your hands, great time to read. Beating Broadway, Writer's Journey. There's also one by this guy named Aaron Frankel called Writing the Broadway Musical. First book I ever read about it. Very well. Uh, my own my own staff or any tips for creating routine and schedule while home during all of this. For those of you just joining late, when she see, when she says all oh look, look instant graphics by Mary. Um, when when Monica Hammond says all of this, she means work and her brand new baby, her brand new baby. Um, so yeah, it's a shit ton of work, isn't it, Monica? I mean that quite literally. Uh, I'm here for you. Uh, try to have a routine, but really it goes all out the window with that little baby. But um, it gets better. Every day is a little better. Uh, Angela Brown, if you're bored, read my novels. Angela, comment in what your novels are named. Come on. Give, give a shout out to yourself. That's what this is about. Give a shout out to yourself. David Green's looking for a collaborator, he's a composer. David, do you know about, um, oh, great, a book recommendation from Graham. Graham, where are you? Where are you, Graham? Uh, David Green, looking for a composer to join in. Uh, what was I just gonna say about that? Uh, dang it. Oh, David, we have our, um, and Mary will flash this up. 
We have a production database. I don't know if you're a part of it. If you work in the theater, if you're a composer, a lyricist, a book writer, a director, an actor, whatever, we are compiling this huge database of people so that you can find uh, collaborators, you can find other people to work with. So David, go check that out. Mary, when she catches up with me, will throw up what the, not vomit, she will literally throw up on the screen what the database link is, or maybe Monica who works more with our database will comment it. Um, musical based on Lysistrata, great. There's been another, it's a big um, trivia question. We're gonna play some trivia because I don't know, we're making this up as we go along. Michael Shane is writing a musical based on Lysistrata. What other Broadway musical was based on Lysistrata? I actually think there have been two. If Jen Tepper was here, and she will be here in two weeks, Broadway producer, social media guru, and just all around great gal, musical theater historian, Jen Tepper will be here, and she'll tell you the two musicals. Mary, remind me to ask her that. Um, Angela's novel is named April Rain. Go to Amazon, check it out. That's what we're doing. We're giving shout outs to people. Uh, Graham's in Virginia. I was hoping Ireland. I don't know. You're the photo, Graham, Donahue. I was hoping Ireland. I thought I knew the answer and I didn't. That's that old lawyer, lawyer rule. Never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. I didn't know the answer. Virginia is still a pretty cool place. Hope you're staying safe and staying healthy and staying home in Virginia as well. Um, what do we got? Hi from Spain. What do you think about our beloved Antonio Banderas project of to take his Spanish version of a chorus line this summer. I love it. I love it. I'm dying to see anything. You could bring back O Calcutta, Moose Murders, Carrie, and uh, what was that crazy one that was a Breakfast at Tiffany's musical years ago? Put up Richard Chamberlain, like put them all, take all the flops, roll them into one, and I'm dying to see it right now. I would pay premium prices to see Moose Murders. That's how bad I am craving a theater fix right now. Give me the worst musical on the planet. I will line up and pay premium prices and invite all you to come with me and we'll buy a group. We'll get 10% off. We'll do a meet and greet backstage with the cast. Uh, we'll just tell them how great we thought it was, like everyone does when they go see a show. This is Trata Jones. Yes, that is one of those Lissa Strata musicals. Uh, John and Max get it. Um, hey, let's John and Max. Private chat me, we're gonna send you two of our board games, okay? We're gonna just send you our free, our Be a Broadway Star board games just for answering those trivia questions. No one at my staff knows how we're gonna get them to you or when we're gonna get them to you, but we're gonna get you some games because uh, they're fun to play right now. Um, Graham is from Irish descent, so I'm like a carnival fortune teller. I sort of got it right. I'm just making crap up. Look at that. You're like. I'll, I'll, if this theater thing doesn't work out, I'll, I'll go into fortune telling where people are from, sort of. Uh, there's Angela's website. Uh, Patrick here. Uh, my godfather is here. Literally, the godfather is here. Um, that's amazing. Uh, Dr. V is in the house. Uh, Dr. Veneziano. Um, thank you for tuning in. This is what it's all about. We're pulling all sorts of folks together. Please give my best. I hope you guys are all uh, safe and, and healthy down there. You're in Winston-Salem, right? Uh, I hope you guys are all safe and healthy and um, give my best to your lovely wife. Uh, the Joseph A. Veneziano there, you see, they practically raised me. They practically raised me, these guys. So I'm so thankful to them uh, for everything. They gave me so many rides, so many baseball games. You have no idea, no idea. Uh, means so much that you guys are here. Um, what's a streaming platform you'd recommend to live stream my two Broadway signs? Um, this is a great question, a very specific, practical question. Um, streamingmusicals.com. Mary, do we have Paul Gordon yet lined up for one of these things? Let's get Paul Gordon, composer of Jane Eyre, composer of Daddy Long Legs, composer of Emma, uh, and also the creator of that site right there, Streaming Musicals. He'll talk about streaming. Um, Paul's a brilliant guy, um, brilliant composer. Uh, I'm, I, yes, I am biased. I mean, if you have a Broadway HD membership, and I think you can get it free all month, by the way, free all month Broadway HD, go watch Daddy Long Legs. And listen, when Broadway HD says free, we normally go to these places like, oh, it's free, and then they're going to charge us. Here's the thing. They're offering you something free for 30 days. Go take advantage of it and cancel the thing when you're done if you don't want it. 
cancel it. They're doing something for you. Cancel it, okay? Join Broadway HD. Uh, they're probably gonna get mad at me for saying that, but who cares? Uh, Broadway HD, go watch Daddy Long Legs. Daddy Long Legs on there. Watch it for free and cancel your membership when it's done if you don't wanna pay for it after. I know these are hard times affecting us all. Everyone's wallet, every single person in the world has been affected. So when people offer you free shit, just take it, take it. Go watch a musical for God's sake. Kinky Boots is on there. Uh, Daddy Long Legs is on there. Uh, lots of stuff is on there. Lots of NT Live stuff. So go check it out, broadwayhd.com. Uh, um, but check out streamingmusicals.com as well. Uh, yeah, Joanne, uh, Dean, a Broadway HD membership. I read um, that they uh, you can you can get it for free for 30 days. And if you can't, they should give it to you for free. We sh I'm going to start a rumor that they are if they're not. Someone check it out. With someone, I'm going to turn my head to my other monitor over here and just check and make sure. Um, okay, it says seven days free. Somewhere I read, eh, seven days. You can watch a lot of musicals in seven days. Um, so go check it out. Was the wall covering behind you? In sp okay, Alan, I'm not answering that question. The answer is no. Uh, that's enough of that. Barbara from Dallas Arts Month. Hi, Barbara. Um, hi, Holly. Hi, Holly in Texas. Uh, hope everyone down there is healthy and happy uh, and make it as much theater as possible. Uh, Kender, welcome Ken Baker. It's Father Ken Baker, actually. Correct? Correct. Welcome, Father. Uh, Isidro says it's worth 99 bucks a year. Um, okay, we're, these, these episodes are only going to go about 30 minutes every, every day. Every day. We're at 34. I mean, this is amazing. Um, I'm so happy you guys all joined because um, I feel better. I hope you feel better. Uh, and you're going to feel even better tomorrow because tomorrow, um, yeah, yeah, it's Stephen Schwartz. Wicked, Godspell, Pippin. I mean, come on. Stephen Schwartz is going to talk to you remotely. Um, he had the best response of all. He, his email to me was like, Ken, I like, like I started this, how I started this. I'm like, I wish I was not doing this right now. Uh, that's what's the, I wish I could say I had a meeting to go to or a curtain to see. I don't, I will be there. Uh, so he's going to be our first guest. He'll tell you all about how he's coping with everything that's going on. If he's writing what he's writing, I may try to get him to play a little something, but don't tell him I said that. Um, so who knows what will, um, what will happen tomorrow, eight o'clock Eastern with Stephen Schwartz, composer, lyricist, Stephen Schwartz. My first show I ever lead produced was Godspell, um, of course, by Stephen. He's been an incredible friend and incredible mentor. Uh, I sat down with him a few months ago to have lunch, and he gave me unbelievable advice and words of encouragement. He's going to do the same for you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Join us then, producersperspective.com live. Look at all the other folks that are coming up. Look at them all. Alan Cumming is coming. Look at that. That I mean, that's you know, he's, he's, his name is coming and he is also coming to the Producers Perspective Live. Uh, Alex Brightman, Janine Tesori is going to be here. Janine Tesori and Sierra, lots of great people, but Stephen Schwartz tomorrow at 8 p.m. Okay, a couple other things before we go. We're going to end every single episode like this. Don't forget uh, about the Actors Fund. Don't forget if you want to do anything right now, anything helps all the people working in the entertainment industry, actorsfund.org. Go check it out. And last, but definitely not least, we're going to try to have some fun. We're going to try to bring you lots of stuff. Yes, I'm going to try to get Stephen Schwartz to play for you. We're also here for a very serious reason. Do this. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home. Stay home, everyone. We're going to wrap our arms around this together. We're going to wrap our arms around this together so that we can actually wrap our arms around each other again really soon and go see a show together and it's going to be quite a day when we do that thanks so much for so thanks so much for tuning into this very first episode of the producer's perspective live join us tomorrow steven schwartz i miss you guys we'll see you tomorrow